Um, for our first talk, we start with Phyllis Tescan Zanerci, from who's well, now a PhD student with Andrea Martin at the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics in uh, Nijmegen. Um, but she'll present her master thesis um, done together with uh, Funda Yildirim at the Yedi Tepe University in Istanbul in Turkey. And she will talk about recognition of harmonic sound sequences investigated by behavioral and electrophysiological studies. And before you start, Phyllis, um, this is an interactive session, so uh, we basically rely on the attendees to ask a lot of questions. And if you want to ask a question, put it in the Q&A window. And please also indicate whether you want to come up on stage to ask a question or whether I should um, ask it. So, Phyllis, uh, no, it's your turn. Okay, thank you very much, Christoph, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Vistez Jan Semerji. As Christoph mentioned, I will um, present the study of my master's thesis today, which is supervised by Dr. Funda Yildirim. Uh, when two musical notes are played together, uh, simultaneously or consecutively, they can be either perceived as consonants or dissonant, depending on the frequency ratio between the presented notes. And when the ratio is simpler, they sound more consonants. And most of the previous studies, which investigated the recognition performance of harmonic intervals, they compared tonal and atonal melodies in Western music. But in the studies, the compared uh, melodies uh, were different in terms of uh, more abstract musical features rather than um, basic harmonic relation between the consecutive notes. And the results, the findings about the effect of tonality in recognition performance uh, were contradictory in some studies. But mostly, they found an advantage on uh, tonality uh, with only musicians. Uh, in this study, our hypothesis was that if the compared melodies has exactly the same notes uh, and a similar contour, uh, but only differ in terms of the harmonic interval between the consecutive notes, then uh, the recognition performance should be better even for non-musicians. So to do that, um, by using a search algorithm, we first generated a harmonic sequence by assigning perfect fourth and assigning perfect fifth interval. And after that, by shuffling the order of the notes uh, with some specific constraints, the inharmonic melodies were generated. So at the end, both melodies has a very similar uh, contour, but inharmonic sequence only had more complex frequency ratio between the notes. And after that, we also generated a modified version of the melodies. Uh, by increasing the frequency of a selected note by 60 hertz. Uh, these modified melodies were used in the recognition task as a mismatch condition. And all the notes in the melodies were sinusoidal pure tones, and the duration of the tones were varied between uh, 50 and 400 milliseconds, which gave four different duration condition and two different harmonic condition. In the behavioral experiment, uh, there were 30 non-musician participants. And during the uh, recognition task, in half of the trials, um, the first melody and the second melody was exactly the same, and the rest, they were uh, not same. We used the modified version. And we analyzed the deep prime values uh, based on the uh, correct and false answers of the subjects. Um, we analyzed the deep prime values by using uh, repeated measures ANOVA. And we found the uh, main effect on both harmony and duration, and there were no, no interaction between them. So the recognition performance was better for harmonic melodies than in harmonic melodies. And we also conducted an EG experiment. And in this experiment, uh, there were 11 uh, non-musician participants. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't continue to collect more data uh, because coronal lockdown started at that time. Uh, the experimental setup is very similar to the first experiment. But here we only used uh, the duration of 100 milliseconds, and we uh, only modified the fourth note, which was corresponding exactly the same note in both melodies. We first analyzed the amplitudes of sustained anterior negativity as a measure of working memory load, uh, because in the previous experiments, previous studies, it's shown that the amplitudes of sustained anterior negativity during the maintenance phase is increasing by the increased memory load. However, in, the, in that studies, and the working memory load was manipulated by uh, the number of items to be held in the memory. But here, uh, for both melodies, harmonic and inharmonic melodies, there were 10 nodes. So uh, the better recognition performance for harmonic sequences uh, couldn't be explained by the working memory load. 
and then we also analyze the uh, mismatch signals between the second matching and non-matching melodies. And uh, even though there wasn't any significant difference between the amplitudes of N200 components, the amplitude of P300 components was bigger in harmonic melodies. Um, the amplitude of N200 component was shown to be dependent on the distance between standard and deviant stimuli, and also the precision and the predictability of the stimuli. However, P300 uh, amplitude was associated with the violation of a high level expectation. So in this case, this expectation should be built by the uh, harm regularity of the harmonic interval between the nodes. So as conclusion, uh, the stronger harmonic relation between consecutive nodes increases the recognition performance. And the results suggest that this better recognition performance is related with building a higher level expectation due to the uh, harmonic interval regularity between the nodes. And I would like to thank my thesis supervisor, Kunda Yildirim, and also Dr. Gökçer Eskikurt from Istinia University for their support during this project. And thank you for listening. Um, yes, yeah, thank you very much, Phyllis. So um, if um, you have questions, um, post them in the uh, Q&A now. Oh, there's the first one coming in. Um, so Luis uh, asks, um, so Luis, do you want to come on stage to ask a question? Um, if yes, uh, either uh, comment on the question or um, you can also uh, wave your hand. Uh, uh, hi, yeah. can you hear me? Hi, yes. Hello. yes. Um, Great. Yeah, so um, I hope you understood the question. Um, or should I elaborate on my question? Um, yeah, maybe just just. Uh, okay, so you played you played a sequence. So yeah. if I understood this correctly, you played a sequence of, of tones, and then mm -hmm. after that, you're actually assigning your ERP components to either the specific tone, like the fourth tone. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, actually, no. Um, mm -hmm. This is where the deviant tone, the fourth note, uh, begins. Mm -hmm. And then and the rest of the signal, while still other notes uh, continue to play, uh, were subtracted from each other. Because after the fourth note, the only difference was the fourth note, and the other notes were exactly the same for both harmonic second match condition and also uh, second non-match condition. So when we subtracted the signals, uh, the difference between here and also here uh, gives us the amplitude of P300 and N200 components. I see. So that's so you're actually analyzing the difference wave and you're yeah. considering. Mm -hmm. So how would you specify that that's the P300? Is that from the uh, grand average waveform? Uh, I mean, how yeah. would you specifically say that that's the P300 interval? Actually, based on the time interval of the peaks okay. and the positivity, um, I, I did two analysis actually. The first one, uh, based on the uh, literature, the P300 was um, defined between uh, two, 300 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds, uh, this region, uh, this positivity. Uh, also, I uh, compared uh, the whole signal after the deviant tone presentation until the end of the um, maintenance interval um, by um, comparing them with the cluster-based permutation e-test. So it also gave um, difference, the positivity, positive cluster in this region. So well, in the second yeah. one, I didn't assign, I didn't put any limitations on the interval, but just compared the whole signal uh, throughout the time interval. That's very helpful. Thank you very much for clarifying that. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Yeah. And we have another question. Um, Julia, do you also want to come on stage? Um, I can already see your mic is on. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Uh, it's a very, very naive question. I was wondering, since you said you had the non-musicians as your participants, how would it differ between harmonic and inharmonic differences if you consider the expertise level, maybe? I don't know if there is any uh -huh. study who did it before with musicians, but I wondered what would you think? What would change if it will change if you did it with the musicians? Um, it's actually, nice. previous, yeah, no, no, I, I think it's a very good question uh, because in the previous uh, studies, which I mentioned at the beginning, 
they already compared the uh, recognition performance of musicians and non-musicians. Mm -hmm. And um, musicians are used to these regularities already because um, they are getting a formal education and um, because of the maybe statistical learning of the uh, notes, uh, they somehow know which notes come from uh, which note uh, more often. So uh, they have that abstraction in their minds, uh, maybe. So for them, the recognition performance um, should be better because of their experience. But um, even though uh, non-musician subjects didn't get any formal um, training, um, this harmonic interval is so uh, basic feature. Um, mm -hmm. And some other studies which uh, also investigated the just harmony uh, of two uh, sounds, two uh, simultaneously presented sounds, and they also showed that even regardless of their musical education, people prefer some sounds on others. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we also wanted to see it, uh, if this will be an advantage with the non-musicians. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, thank you. So we still have some time left, so maybe I'll ask another question. Um, so basically, uh, you uh, looked at the difference between these harmonic and inharmonic uh, uh, sequences and uh, have, could you maybe comment a bit on the, um, on the on the neural components or mechanisms underlying it? So I guess it's, it's, it's some uh, mm -hmm. feedback uh, mechanism. Yeah. Um, actually, there could be uh, two things about this uh, sequences. The first one, um, here, um, the subjects could be uh, tracking the regularity because um, if they compare the present note with the previous notes, uh, there is always a, a regular harmonic interval. It's either perfect fifth or perfect fourth. And this, they could be um, tracking the statistical regularity or uh, also some uh, computational models show that um, the neuronal populations um, Pace locked when the uh, frequency of the notes which are presented is a, is a simpler ratio. So it could be a, a phase locking of neuronal activity uh, due to the uh, frequency ratio. So it could be maybe forming a more uh, stable memory trace uh, regardless of this regularity. If it wasn't uh, always perfect four times perfect fifth, or um, there could be, if there were some more other uh, different harmonic intervals, uh, we could be also seeing this. Um, perform uh, recognition performance advantage. So maybe okay, uh, in yeah. a future study they should also be distinguished. Yeah, great, thank you. And one last question again by uh, Luis, Luis, if you want to ask it yourself. Um, yeah, so it just occurred to me as to just your personal thoughts as to why mm -hmm. you think that an that an expected fourth note actually results in a larger P300 when the P300 is often associated with um, surprise or a change in context. Yeah, uh, actually for both harmonic and inharmonic melodies, uh, the fourth note is changing and it's making, it's creating a surprise, which is unexpected. Um, so instead of this red uh, note, uh, when the um, modified chord note is presented, um, it's creating a surprise, but it is for both of them, both harmonic and inharmonic. So both of them are um, causing a P300 signal, but the amplitude of P300 signal in harmonic um, melodies is bigger. So it's not only uh, for harmonic melodies. If I, I could understand your question correctly. Oh, I see. So you're suggesting that because the uh, the listeners have a better template or a background expectation that yeah. it's more mm. surprising when they... And okay, I see. Mm -hmm. I understand your experiment design better now. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. So thank you again for this for a nice talk. And uh, thanks everyone for asking questions. So let's move on to our second speaker. Our second speaker.